Hi everyone, I'm Ava and I'm an American living here in the Netherlands. And today, I wanted to share with you English idioms and phrases that have the word Dutch in them. Why would I want to share such a thing, you ask? Well, the answer is simple, because there are just so gosh darn many of them. I had no idea that us English speaking folk were so obsessed with the Dutch. I mean, if you were to just take a look at the number of idioms and phrases out there in English that revolve around the Dutch, well, you would think we had a little bit of a stalker obsession problem. Now, I won't be sharing all of these with you today. I'm going to cherry pick some of my favorites. Now, if you are Dutch, I wanna know, did you know any of these phrases that I talk about before, or is this your first time hearing them? Let me know in the comments down below. So the first phrase I have for you today is Dutch courage, also known as liquid courage, drink, or alcohol. It's alcohol. So if you are, <laughs> talking to a friend and you, let's say you really are preparing yourself to have this difficult conversation, you might say something like, wait a second, I need a sip of that Dutch courage first. This is actually used pretty frequently. I have used this phrase myself. I have heard people around me use it, but when I lived in the US, I never thought to myself, aha, this phrase has something to do with the Dutch. It's just something we say, but I think this phrase clearly tells you what Americans think of the Dutch, or I guess what English speakers think of the Dutch, that they are fond of alcohol. And I will say from experience that that doesn't seem to be completely false. Dutch people do love a drink. They do love their beer. You neighbor, hey, insert alcohol name here. I have to say that this phrase makes total sense to me. I can see why we use it. This idea of the Dutch folk liking to drink carries over to other phrases as well. So we also have the phrase Dutch agreement and a Dutch bargain. So these two, at least in my everyday usage, are not as common as the Dutch courage, lady liquid courage. But a Dutch bargain is a bargain that happens over drinks and a Dutch agreement is an agreement that you make when you are intoxicated. Hmm. I wonder why only the Dutch have the privilege of making bargains and agreements with alcohol because I feel like this is just a human thing. When you are drinking, you are more likely to agree to things you wouldn't when you're sober. I feel like there are a number of movies, jokes, and cultural references based around this. So the Dutch folk though have the privilege of the Dutch agreement. And it's funny because I feel like as an English speaker, even if you didn't quite know what the phrase meant, you could kind of figure it out because of the Dutch courage. You would assume that it had something to do with drinking or alcohol or a bar. So like I said, a Dutch agreement or Dutch bargain are not phrases that I typically use. But if you are an English speaker, I would like to know, are these phrases part of your usage? And if you are Dutch, how do these phrases make you feel? I feel like they're not totally inaccurate from my experience here, but I also feel like you could say other things about the Dutch. It's really interesting that this is what, what stuck with us general English speaking folk. Number three on my list for today has to be the most well-known of all of these English phrases, and that is going Dutch. I wonder if it's well-known because it's true. <laughs> The phrase going Dutch means that if you go out somewhere and you're paying for something and you're with another person, you split the check right down the middle. Now, if you are going out with a Dutch person, not just in a dating scenario, just generally, let's say you're with a friend and you go out to dinner, you do not be surprised if the person you are with, if you are non-Dutch, that the Dutch person wants to split the bill. I think it's just part of the culture here. And as an American, this is kind of also part of American culture. What is not part of American culture though, is that if you are going out to get coffee with a friend, one person usually just picks it up. And that is not the case in the Netherlands. If you are with a friend, you kind of just ticky each other. The app Tiki has just made splitting the check for Dutch people that much easier. You could go out and have coffee with a friend and they might get it there, but don't be surprised if they send you a Tiki. A Tiki is a payment request and then you will just have to pay them back. And it makes sense, right? Like you got the drink, it's whatever you decided to buy. I think it's very clean and very practical. So it doesn't surprise me that the Dutch like to do it. That said, I was told recently that while Dutch women, for instance, on a date with a Dutch man would be very happy splitting the bill, it is often something that comes up on the show first dates, like when they're on the date and they have to like do something with the check. I've watched this show a couple of times, but this is what other Dutch people tell me, that if you wanna learn about the Dutch splitting the Czech culture, 
watch that show and you will figure it out. It is funny though, because I feel like getting a ticky is a bit more like shocking or not shocking. It sounds too intense. Like I was shocked by the ticky. No, it's a bit more jarring than if you're just like at a restaurant and you say, okay, let's split it. But having to ticky someone is this whole other layer of effort. So I have people who don't ticky me sometimes because it's a bit awkward or uh, yeah, if you, I have to send someone a ticky, I kind of hesitate a bit because I don't want to be rude. It's very American of me. Anyway, hey, you Dutch folk, I am sure you have a lot to say about this ticky business and splitting the bill culture. So let me know. But the phrase going Dutch is alive and well. I use it all the time, especially now that I'm in the Netherlands. It's good fun. The next phrase on this list is a Dutch uncle. If you are a non-native English speaker, let me know in the comments what you think this phrase means. Now, an uncle usually conjures up a really nice image. It's like kind of like your dad, but not really. He's just like a playful, fun figure. Not a Dutch uncle. A Dutch uncle is very strict and they are totally no nonsense, stern, just kind of not fun. This is a phrase that English speakers do use pretty regularly or regularly enough that I've heard it being used, but I don't know why. Why is a Dutch uncle super strict? That doesn't seem to go with my, <laughs> my experience with Dutch people who really like to bend the rules and yes, they show up on time to things, but like I have to think of a German being or the German stereotype not Germans in general, but the German stereotype of, you know, being on time, really sticking to the rules. Dutch people to me don't quite seem that way. Uh, so I don't know why we say it. How interesting would it be if an American actually had a Dutch uncle? I feel like th there has to be someone out there like that. Maybe you are watching this video. Let me know. So if you are American and you have a Dutch uncle, what is your Dutch uncle like? Do they fit the stereotype? Do they not fit the stereotype? Is it awkward when you say, oh, I'm going to go visit my Dutch uncle? Who knows? Language is crazy, my friends. The next phrase on this list is taking Dutch leave. This is when you quietly sneak out on a party or a date uh, without saying goodbye, without trying to, you know, draw too much attention to yourself. You want to be very sneaky about it. This sounds very British. I personally have not heard this phrase being used and I suspect that it's British because Americans don't take leave. We simply get the hell out of here. I have no idea why this phrase exists about Dutch people. Like why is it taking Dutch leave? Because from my experience, Dutch people do not take Dutch leave. They insist on saying goodbye to everybody. I mean, when you enter a room and you, you know, see all the Dutch people standing in a circle, cause that's what they like to do. And then you have to go to each person in the circle, say hello, mwah, 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 you know, three times. Don't get that wrong. Otherwise it leads to awkward scenarios. And then when you leave, you do the same thing. You go to that circle again and say goodbye to everybody. Mwah, 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 three times again. And it can take freaking forever. I think if you were to leave a Dutch party without saying anything, that would not be okay. People would, you know, just try and find you or they would ask you what happened. I, I feel like that would just be totally unacceptable. I feel like this phrase should have been called taking American leave because this is something Americans would do. You could be at a party and then if you haven't seen your friend for a while, you just be like, yeah, they probably went home. You don't expect people to say goodbye to you. And this could be at a family gathering. Like you could come and go and then people are like, ah, where is so-and-so because you know, as an American, you don't like to pry into someone's business. You might message them and say, Hey, are you okay? You left early, but it's to me, unless it was a really small, intimate family gathering or a date, and then you just leave without saying goodbye. Yeah, that is rude. But at a party, not so much. Even the saying hello is, I mean, when you see a person one-on-one, -on -one, you say hello not like the Dutch way of entering a room and then saying hello to everyone in it. Or if it's someone's birthday, wishing everyone in the room a happy birthday. So given all of this, I don't know why this phrase is about the Dutch. Now let us talk about ovens, more specifically Dutch ovens. If you Google Dutch oven, you will find a oven that is called a Dutch oven that you use for cooking. The Dutch oven also has other meanings. <laughs> And it has a really funny, silly meaning, and it has to do with farts. Okay, so Dutch oven scenario. You're in bed with another person 
like maybe hanging out with a friend, whatever you do. And then you decide to fart and then you take the bed covers and you trap the person in bed with you underneath the covers with your fart so that they are in a Dutch fart oven. Who came up with this? Also, I don't know who this reflects poorly on. Like, does it reflect poorly on the Dutch because that's what English speakers think of the Dutch? Or does it reflect poorly on English speakers who came up with the freaking phrase to begin with? The final phrase that I have for you today is double Dutch. Now, double Dutch means something different in British English as opposed to North American English. So in British English, supposedly, double Dutch means like gibberish. You're speaking a language I don't understand or it's all Greek to me, that kind of thing. Although I wouldn't know, <laughs> I'm not British. Except when I have some of that Dutch courage, then I'm magically a little British. <laughs> at least my accent is, or at least I think it is. Anyway, so that is the British meaning of double Dutch. In North America, it refers to like a jump rope game where you have these two skipping ropes that just move rhythmically and it, it's a game. And there is also that meaning of double Dutch where it refers to using two types of contraceptives. I don't know why that phrase refers to Dutch people specifically because I feel like this is again, more of a general broader human thing, but hey, language is interesting and sometimes things are the way they are and you don't know why. So those were some English expressions about the Dutch that I wanted to share with you today and I am really excited to see what you folks have to say about them in the comments down below. And until next time. <laughs>